This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Why don't you say that with me today? This is the day the Lord has made. And I'm going to rejoice. You know you have a choice. You can get up every morning and you can choose to be sad. You can choose to feel bad or you can choose to rejoice. Amen. And then when something comes against you that doesn't go along with what you really thought, you, know, you, ever, you ever thought about that, that went better in my head than it really went? You ever had that thought before? Well, then you can just say TTR, time to rejoice. Praise God, time to rejoice. Well, today is Father's Day. Let's give our fathers a big hand today. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers here and on live stream. You know, I'm a dad and it's one of the most significant things in my life. I love being a dad. And now I'm a pop. Praise God. And I was born for that. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Alan Duke and my wife, Melissa, and I, uh, we are honored to serve as the associate pastors here at Life of Faith and work with such wonderful people. Praise God. Uh, if you're visiting with us for the very first time, we want to welcome you today. Thank you for joining us today. Let's welcome our first time guests. Amen. Also, if you're uh, on our live stream audience and you're vis visiting today, uh, let's welcome them today. Live stream. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining in. You know, if you're looking for a good church home, this is a good one. Amen. Amen. Y'all should have shouted when I said that. Now. You know, I say that humbly, but I say it boldly and without apology. This is a good place. Amen. You know, if you don't love your church, why would you expect anybody else to? Come on now. Amen. Well, that went over big. <laughs> Praise God. You know, I, I may say some things today that Pastor Mark wouldn't necessarily say, mainly because he's a nicer guy than I am. But <laughs> no, his heart is always to be aware of communicating with grace. But you know what? We're in this era of what I like to call post-scandal evangelism. You know what I mean by that? Where you have to apologize for everything you say first. And if you're going to minister anything to anybody, you have to wrap it in three compliments. Well, I've already started stirring stuff up today. Praise God. Well, thank you for coming today. And if this truly is the last time I'm ever allowed to be up here, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make His face shine upon you. You know, people just wonder, whatever happened to Alan? You know, we, you know after today, it'll be, you know, we always love to hear him speak, and he's just gone. You know, uh, we love to hear him on the piano, and he, Melissa was so sweet, and they were so encouraging. They just disappeared. What, whatever happened to them? And then, then they'll go, the, the room will go around. Oh, they got offended. They got offended at something. No, I'm just joking. We love to have fun. Amen? Amen. You know, we said it's going to be fun in 21, right? Well, you can't say fun in 21 and be sad. Right. You got to have fun. Praise yes. God. Yes. Amen. So before we get in the message today, I'm just impressed to read this verse and just declare it over you today. Psalm 6511 from the Modern English Version. I love this translation. He says, You crown the year with your goodness, Come on now. and your paths drip with abundance. You crown the year 2021 with your goodness and your paths drip abundance. Say that with me one time. Say this. Say, you crown the year 2021 with your goodness and your paths drip with abundance. And you know, if I'm walking in his path, that means I'm walking in abundance, right? That's what we have to think. Now, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, the Lord was ministering to us that, you know, we're halfway through the year and we ought to do a six-month checkup. Praise the Lord. Can you believe we're already halfway through 2021? Amen. What are we expecting? You know, the Lord ministered things to us on New Year's Eve. Are we still thinking of those things? Are we still all in? Are we still having fun? Are we still running in 2021? Are we still strong and of a good courage and still on the path? Amen. Amen. You know, we talk that verse constantly at our house that um, the Lord has crowned our year with goodness. We're walking in abundance. So keep declaring that over yourself. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, that was the appetizer. Amen. It's kind of like, kind of like getting a blooming onion before you eat that big steak at Outback, right? Now, uh, last month, Pastor Mark began a series on honor that is part of an ongoing series that we're doing here at Life of Faith on uh, developing godly character. And he's asked me last Sunday and today to talk about humility. Thank you for that thunderous applause. I am so encouraged right now. You know, I always thought he liked me. And appreciated me. <laughs> then he did that. <laughs> you know, I always wondered what the bottom side of a bus felt like. Now I know. <laughs> now, 
no, we're just having fun. No, I love teaching on this. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And those, you know what? The Lord has had me and Melissa feeding on this all year. So it's big in our heart. It's big in us. It's the nature of Jesus himself. You know, he called himself meek and humble. So I believe he is. But you know what? He carried himself with authority. You know, you can be strong and bold and meek at the same time and humble. Amen. You know, Jesus' words carried such authority, he didn't try to prove who he was. But it, when he would speak, it said the Pharisees looked at him and said, Who is this guy that has such authority? But he was bold, but he was meek. Amen. So we can be too. You know, I think people think that, you know, if you walk in humility, the world's just going to walk all over you. But no, that's not it at all. It's a great strength. It's a great strength just to depend on him and walk in humility. And it radiated out of a man that authority radiated out of a man that called himself meek and lowly. Amen? You know, humility is not walking around with your head hung low and afraid to say anything. No, it's not at all. Praise God. Uh, that can be just as much pride as thinking you know everything because what you're doing is you're thinking about yourself. So that's really what pride is, is just looking at yourself all the time. Humility is God-focused and people-focused. Praise God. Now, we've got a lot to cover today, so... Uh, to get to everything the Lord wants to cover. So we can't reteach everything from last week. So for time's sake, I'm not really going to review much. But uh, you can go and view last week's service on our YouTube page in its entirety on your smartphone or other devices. And uh, thank God for technology like that. Amen? Amen. It's just we, it's right at our fingertips. You know, there's just no excuse in this day and time not to be full of the Word. Come on, man. It's available to us. Yes, it is. I heard that Andrew Womack has over 200,000 hours of teaching on his website. Well, you could never get to that in a, a lifetime. So how do you do it? You just listen to the Lord and you feed on what He tells you to feed on. That's right. Praise God. This year He's told us to feed on humility. So that's what we did. So like I said, the, in two services we can't cover this in depth, uh, but we trust the Lord is going to highlight what He wants to highlight. And then He's going to speak to you about your life. Amen? That's right. And you know, I can only teach what's revelation to me and what I'm walking in. Uh, now, Andrew Womack has a book. It's called More Grace, More Favor. It's a great book. We have it in our bookstore here. I recommend you read it. He also has 20 teaching videos from his daily television program. If you go to his YouTube page and look up More Grace, More Favor, it'll come right up. Uh, take the time to read those and feed on them. You know, it's a part of uh, this year we're, we're, we're moving into this about developing godly character. This is part of our DNA. It's part of our culture here at Life of Faith. You know, a remarkable culture, in my opinion, is that we're, I want the best for every one of you. Amen. And I'm going to give you my very best but I'm also expecting your very best. So we're always just giving our best to each other. Praise God. But I believe you're going to receive impartations from the Spirit of God today. And some things about humility and honor are going to be established in us. Amen? Amen. Now we mentioned before that character is not really a King James Bible word. It's in other translations. But if you go to the verses that mention character in other translations, you'll notice that King James says things like virtue, patience, faithfulness. It mentions words like um, fruits of righteousness, manners. Oh, wouldn't it be a wonderful world if everybody just had good manners nowadays? And it also mentions words like perfect, which is a word for maturity. And we've talked a lot of late about developing maturity. And one of the main characteristics of being a mature believer is this aspect of humility in our lives. So, praise the Lord. Now, when we talked about honor, I love the uh, verse that Pastor Mark read. So I'm going to ask him to put up this uh, Romans chapter 12 uh, and verse 10 in the English Standard Version. This, ver this verse really describes humility. Love one another with brotherly affection. How do I do that, Alan? Outdo one another in showing honor. Say outdo. You know, when you outdo somebody, you meant to do it. You know, if, you, if, if somebody did something good, you're going to one-up them, you plan it. How am I going to do better than they did? Well, how can I outdo Jeff in honor? If Jeff did something good for me, you know, I would love to just plan to do something good for him, right? Amen. So it's, it's intentional. Outdoing one another in honor is intentional. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to Proverbs 15, verse 33. We read this verse last week. And this is sort of the, the subject matter. Proverbs 15, 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor, before recognition, before positions, before titles, before promotions, is humility. Amen. Now, I was uh, studying this, and the Lord just kind of, you know, you ever just read a, a verse, and the Lord will just highlight a, a word to you, and you go, hey, wait a minute, I need to go look at that. Uh, in this verse, 
Before honor is humility. The word before can be translated, it was translated almost 400 times in the Bible as face. So honor has a face. It's humility. That's what honor looks like. It has a face on it. It also means presence. So the presence of honor is humility. It'll be present. Thank you for that amen. <laughs> you know, honor has a spirit to it. Honor has a face to it. So to me, the face of honor is just being humble. You know, I looked at those so many times I read those verses, and I would have thought, if I want to be honored, then I need to show humility first. But I realized in studying this, even before I can even honor you, I've got to be humble in my heart. Because otherwise, if I'm just honoring people just to be honoring people, it can even be self-serving. You know, it can be manipulative even, even if it's not even intentional to be, if it's not coming from my heart. So we talked a lot about that last week. You know, people want honor and recognition in this life, don't they? It's probably one of the things that psychiatrists deal with people the most is they don't feel like they get enough honor and recognition in life. So how do you get honor? Well, how about this? Here's a radical thought. How about giving honor? How about just giving honor away? Jesus said this in Luke 6, 38. He said, Give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. Now we use that sometimes for the offering, but what about giving honor and humility to people? As I was studying this, one word just stood up on the page, give and it, got about this big, will be given to you. Give honor and it will be given to you. Praise God. What about respect? You know, anybody remember the guy Rodney Dangerfield? Some of y'all are too young to remember him. But his whole career was built on telling jokes about I don't ever get no respect. Well, give respect and it will be given to you. How about just giving away respect and honor and faithfulness? What about cooperation? Oh, do we need cooperation in this life? Well, you want people to cooperate with you. Give and it will be given to you. Understanding and forgiveness and it will be given to you. Grace and in money too. You know, we don't want to leave that out. Give and it, it shall be given to you. I heard some people say, now preacher, you're going too far. <laughs> you know, it doesn't seem logical to live that way by always just giving of yourself and it being given back to you. But you know what? We don't want to argue with what Jesus said, right? And see, that's what humility is. Humility will say, Jesus said that, I just accept it and I believe it. Pride wants to exalt its opinion above what Jesus said. Praise God. Somebody say amen. amen. Some people don't want to hear about this principle. But see, you know, there's no faith in looking at something Jesus said and saying, well, that's just not for me. There's no faith in that. There's no trust in that. If we agree with the words of Jesus, if we, excuse me, if we don't agree with the words of Jesus, that's where we slip over into pride. Humility just says, whatever the Lord says about me, I'm just going to accept it, right? If He said, you'll do the works that I did and greater works will you do, okay? And we said, no, that's just, I could never do that. Well, see, you're, you're putting your opinion above what Jesus said. And that's not being humble. Amen? Humility just receives what He said. You know, all these things that are in the Word, all the promises, were His idea. It wasn't my idea. Right? Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, God said in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of your increase, and it will cause your life to burst out with plenty. Amen. Say, burst out with plenty. Burst out with plenty. That was not my idea. That was his idea, right? So if I exalt my opinion above what he said and say, no, that's not for me, then I'm not humbling myself. A humble man will say, Lord, thank you. I will be glad to honor you so that my life bursts with plenty. And now I've got more than enough, not only to take care of me, but to help other people. I heard Brother Andrew say uh, all this subject of, you know, do I give to get? Am I giving to get? Am I trying to manipulate something? You know, first of all, there's no faith in that. There's no faith in that. You believe what Jesus said. But Aunt Brother Andrew said this. He said, I want to give to get, so I've got more to give. That's humility. And that's kingdom living. Now, guys, y'all got to help me out today, okay? Uh, I'm about to go up for my yearly review before the Life of Faith Council of the Presbytery. Oh, y'all didn't know about that. That's a real thing. And it, you know what? If I don't at least make a 70 before them, I'm going to have to retake the ordination exam and they can pull my papers. <laughs> Wait, what? What? 
See, John, John didn't even know about that. No, praise God. You know, one of the things they grade us on heavily is amens and shouts. And I get extra credit for clapping, praise God. <laughs> so y'all help me out today, okay? I don't want to have to go back through associate pastor school, okay? Praise God. No, just trust God. You know, right before that verse in Proverbs 3, 9, he says in verse 5, trust the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. Just trust Him. Praise God. Trust Him. If I, if I am leaning to my own understanding and saying, no, that's not for me, then I'm not humbling myself before Him. Whatever He said in His Word, you don't go above it, but you also don't go below it. You go with what He said. If He says you're righteous, you're righteous. Praise God. I was talking to somebody this morning that said they, they finished two kinds of righteousness and started right over with it again. They're feeding on that. We're getting more skillful at the Word of Righteousness here at Life of Faith because that's what He said about us. I just humble myself. Do I ever feel like I'm not righteous? Absolutely. But it has nothing to do with feelings. It has to do with what He said. Amen. Now, we spent a good bit of time last week talking about humility is a part of our reborn spiritual nature. Now, we can't take time to teach that again, but I do want to reemphasize one thing we talked about. Is it an exercise and a practice that Melissa and I have done for years is we take 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8, and we go through them. We use different translations. There's a bunch of them. But we read those verses and we begin to talk that that's our nature. If God is love, then I'm love. That's who I am. And love is humble. So if He is humble, if Jesus said, I'm meek and lowly and He lives in me, that's my nature. And so by doing that exercise of sitting down and reading those verses and talking that, it draws it out of you. Just yielding to your nature. Allowing that greater one who is humble to rise up and dominate you. Amen? This is a spirit covenant, and believers live out of their spirit. So today we want to catch this spirit of humility. Praise God. Amen. Humility is who we are, and you know what? If you yield to that nature, it's going to affect your behavior. And I told some testimonies about that. You can go back and watch it, about how that just yielding to that nature changed us in an effortless way. And we looked back and went, I didn't even realize we quit doing that. It wasn't even anything we tried to do. So praise the Lord. And Pastor, I said this last week, this is going to bring a depth to every aspect of our ministry. We can get better at systems and processes and the things we do, but this will give impact in a way that all that won't do. We need both, right? You don't want to leave, you know, Jesus said do one, but don't leave the other one undone. <laughs> you know, don't leave that undone, but do this. Amen. And when the Lord's stirring us up in these areas, it's not for the purpose of uh, condemning us or making us feel bad about ourselves or how we failed. It's for the purpose of helping us grow. Amen. And so when, if we do feel guilty, we need to recognize that as sin consciousness and go back to feeding on righteousness because that's who we are. That's why the Lord told us this year to lean into righteousness and get skillful at it. You know, one of the things we talked about being skillful at the word of righteousness is recognizing uh, righteousness or sin consciousness. But what about recognizing pride or humility in our life? Can we get skillful at that too? You know, God called the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride, arrogancy, and the evil way. So the Lord called... Pride, evil. And so, if we're going to discern both good and evil, we need to discern pride and let Him show it to us. And don't feel bad about it. Amen. He's helping us. He's helping us learn. Now, in Matthew chapter 18, even Jesus dealt with pride in His disciples. Imagine that. Y'all been watching that show, The Chosen? I love that show because it just shows that they're just men and women. They're just people, you know? They laugh, they have a good time, they pick at each other, they joke around, they get mad at each other. They eat, they sleep, they preach, they follow Jesus, they wonder what He's doing. You know, they're just people. And I love that. Matthew 18 verse 1 says, At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? So they were looking for honor. They were looking for recognition. Right? And Jesus called a little child unto Him and set Him in the midst of them. And said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted. And we're converted just means turn around. You know, pride takes you the wrong way. Right. And become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So that means we can all be great, right? We can all be the greatest. Right. He's not talking about position or recognition here. He's just talking about growth and maturity. And he, he says again, a little bit more in Matthew 23, verse 11 and 12. Praise the Lord. Matthew 23, 11 and 12. He that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever 
shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So the way up in the kingdom of heaven is down. You know, one of the, meaning, one of the meanings of humility is low or to be lowly. You know? Jesus said, you humble yourself, you're going to be raised up. But if you go around exalting yourself, you're going to be abased. That don't sound any fun to me. They ask him about honor, recognition, validation, positions, title. Who's going to be great? But he said the kingdom operates in humility. And you know, guys, we'll not operate to any degree of success in the kingdom of heaven unless we operate in humility. Now, Jesus didn't say act like a child, okay? I think sometimes people, <laughs> people get off into that. He didn't say act like a child. He said humble yourself like a child. Well, how do children act, you know? Now, you know, if they're teenagers, it's a little bit different, okay? But I'm talking about a little child. <laughs> I've raised teenagers. I, I can say that with authority, okay? <laughs> Amen. But little children, you know, they're just innocent. They're teachable, you know? You, they, they just jump right in. Whatever's going on, they just jump right in the middle of it. They're meek. You know, that's what meek means is just teachable. Just teachable. You know, they're not worried about their needs being met. They're not worried about, you know, whether or not mom and daddy's going to take care of me. You know, my, my grandchildren are just absolutely convinced that mom and daddy and pop and Gigi are just going to meet their needs. My, my, my four-year-old granddaughter, Avery, she just grabs me by the thumb and just pulls me wherever she wants me to go. Expect, you know, she has this thing she's doing right now. I don't know where in the world this came from. But the minute she sees me, she puts her arms up and I pick her up. She, she puts her big toe in my waistband and mounts me like a horse and gets on my shoulders. <laughs> I mean, it's just that quick. And I'm like, and then she starts playing with my hair and want me to guide her around. Well, see, she's just being a child, right? Yeah. Well, see, that's the way we should be with the Lord. Just be meek. You know, children just get in. They don't condemn themselves over mistakes. I have never seen Avery act all sad because she failed or fell down. She'll jump and just get right back up. That's the way that the Lord wants us to be. Just be humble in His sight. Amen. A child has no problem receiving from their parents, or really from anybody. You know, you ever seen a child hand them a piece of candy? They got no problem with that. But see, receiving is humility. Now, a lot of people can give, but going back to Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given to you. When the time comes that you've given and it's given back, we have to be humble to receive. Amen. I know a lot of people that are really good at giving, but not so good at receiving. It takes humility to receive. You know, a farmer who sows a field you know, this, and, and this whole thing, sometimes people feel like it is charity or something, you know. This whole thing about I'm not your charity case, that's not humility. A farmer wouldn't look at his field and say, I'm not your charity case. I'm not going to receive my harvest. Field, I don't want to be beholden to you, field. You know, that's the way the kingdom operates. You give and it's given. Praise God. And, the, and it's just humility to accept that. If we argue with that, Jesus said everything in the kingdom of God operates like seed time and harvest. If we argue with that, we're now exalting our thoughts, our opinion, our understanding above Him. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about begging or being a grifter or a con man, okay? We're talking about receiving from God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, whether it's money or help or advice or honor or humility, you know, it may just be the harvest on some good thing you did for somebody. And it takes humility to receive. Now, amen. Now, this is a grace church, right? Amen. This is a grace church, right? Amen. Praise God. Extra credit. I like it. But we talk about grace being everything that Jesus provided at the finished work of the cross, right? That's right. But grace is tied to humility. So let's look at James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 6. And Cardi's on it today. Praise God. I thought ahead and I gave him the verses already, you know. I just thought, <laughs> duh. I should have done that already, but Cardi's all over. We love him, man. Uh, James chapter 4, verse 6. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Submit, your th submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So he said he giveth more grace. So if you can have more grace then you can have less grace. Does that seem to track there? If you can have more of something, you could obviously have less of it. Wherefore he saith, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And in the context of that verse, he gives more grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore how? By humbling yourself. Resist the devil. Well, the context here is about humbling yourself. So one thing you could resist is pride. 
And this is just a conscious awareness. We talked about this last week. That you're, it's, this is a level of awareness. None of this is about judgment or condemnation. This is new covenant, okay? God's on our side. You realize Jesus is your biggest fan? Yes, he is. He's my biggest fan. Yes, he, is. he wants me to win. Yes. So everything He tells me in His Word is for my benefit. Come on, Praise God. So this is about awareness. Resist pride and pride will flee from you. Draw nigh to God. How? By humbling yourself and He'll draw nigh to you. Verse 10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and He'll lift you up. So humility tied to grace will lift you. Praise God. Now, you know, one of the meanings that we, we read the, the story in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 about Paul and the thorn in the flesh. We don't have time to get off too deep into that. But what he said was, the Lord told him when he prayed about it, my grace is sufficient for you. Okay? One of the means of, one of, the means of sufficient is lift. Grace will lift you out of whatever it is you're in. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and He'll lift you. And uh, one of the ways you humble yourself in verse 11 is speak not evil one of another. You know, pride is always speaking evil of, of other people. You know, now that sounds terrible to say evil, but you know, what about just constant criticism or trying to make yourself look better in the sight of other people? See? And sometimes we do it without even realizing it. But this is about awareness. It's about, not about condemnation. It's about when something like that comes up, you go, now wait a minute, wait a minute. I recognize that. I'm discerning my life now, Lord. You're giving me the wisdom to discern between humility and pride. I, I'm not going to do that. Like I told you all last week when, when the Lord told me and Melissa, if you're really walking in love, you'll stop talking about that. That was a discernment. I saw that. And now every time that came up, I would recognize, okay, I'm not doing that. You're right, Lord. Now, I didn't feel bad about myself. I thanked Him for showing me. Praise God. So you can have more grace or you can have less grace. Grace is accessed by faith and faith is humble because faith just receives from God. Amen. Uh, he says that God resists the proud. Now, Andrew Womack gave in his uh, book and also his teaching, he gave a great example of this. He said he, he compared the power of God to, to electricity. And he said, just like electricity will flow through copper and other types of substances, but it won't flow through wood. Now, it'll burn wood, but it won't flow through it or conduct itself through wood. In the same way that God and His power will flow through a humble person, but it won't flow through pride. Because it's the nature of the enemy. It's the nature of the devil. Jesus' nature is humble. And, you know, we don't have time to get off into it, but we realize what happened when Satan and when Lucifer fell, it was pride that caused him to fall. It's the nature of the enemy. Amen. So it resists that. He's not resisting you. It's not that he doesn't love you. As a matter of fact, he's going to do everything he can to give you the awareness to see it so that you resist it. Right? Because he loves us. Does, does it mean he doesn't love us or you're not, or you're not saved? Praise God. It's just that pride resists the kingdom of God. God resists pride, but pride resists God. Again, this is new covenant now. Just remember that the kingdom is set up to operate in humility. And the more we humble ourselves, and as we said last week, just be totally dependent on Him. Not yourself, not self-centered. More grace flows. Amen. And you know, humility just lives in reality. Humility is just real. You know, when you're in pride... Pride tries to deceive or make people think you're in a place that you're not. Whether it's spiritually, whether it's financially or socially or whatever, it's always a facade. And guys, it's exhausting. We talked about that last week. There's rest in humility. Just be who you are. Amen. That doesn't mean you don't want to grow or anything, but you're just not giving up a false front. Amen. Humility is not going above what God says about you, but it's also not going below. Brother Andrew brings us out that, you know, just being shy and timid all the time, can be just as much pride as being an arrogant and know-it-all. Because either way, you're focused on you. Thank you for that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Meekness and humility is just basically having the opinion about yourself that God has. What He said about me is true. It's not pride to, to brag about what the Lord's done in your life. You just give Him the credit for it, right? Amen. And as I said, Paul learned the secret about this in 2 Corinthians 12. Uh, you know, he talks about uh, having uh, received the abundance of grace. Now, we talk about the abundance of grace in Romans 5, Pastor Mark's favorite verse. You know, abundance of grace, uh, that word means superfluous. More than you'll ever need. Right. So much grace that's unnecessary has been provided at the cross. Come on now. Somebody shout with me now. Hallelujah. Say abundance of, grace abundance of grace has been provided for me. And that verse says, he that receives the abundance of grace. Yeah. Amen. So Paul learned that, that grace was more than enough for him. He learned the secret. So he goes on to say in verse 9 of 2 Corinthians 12, Will I rather glory in my infirmities? 
that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now that may sound like a bad confession. I'm glorying in infirmities. But what he's realized was, is there's so much grace in my life, I get excited when there's something bigger than me because I've got the power of God that's going to rest on me. And I'm going to run toward the giant. I'm not afraid of anything that's bigger than me. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get excited about it because the power of Christ is going to rest upon me. That's humility. He says in verse 10, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities. Now he's not talking about sickness or disease, okay? As a matter of fact, the next part of the verse says what he's talking about. In reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. Not illness, not sickness. Praise God. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Now there's a humble attitude when you recognize that you can't overcome everything in your, in your own flesh, in your own strength, in the natural. And you say, Lord, I trust you. You're bigger. The greater one, we sang about him this morning, the greater one will rise up in me and put me over in this. Praise the Lord. Also, we don't just pray to God when our back's up against the wall. That's right. You know, sometimes people can get the idea because, you know, we're, we're Americans, right? <laughs> we're independent. We're self-sufficient. Well, I, Lord, I got this. I'll call you if I need you. Now, I know people don't consciously think that, but if you only go to God when your back's against the wall, then you're not trusting Him and being dependent on Him for the rest of your life. No, we acknowledge Him in all our ways. Big things, small things. We're not self-made. You know, He made you. If I get off into this too much, I'm going to go to preaching now. He made me a new creature. I'm not a self-made man. He made me a new creature. That's what I am. And that creature is righteous. Praise God. I better stop or I'm going to go to shout now. <laughs> now some will inevitably say, well, this is not talking about me. I'm not full of pride. But see, this is something, guys, that every single one of us have to be a conscious and aware of because it's the nature of the flesh, right? If you're not conscious of it and allow the spirit man to rise up and dominate, you'll yield to it. Doesn't mean that anything's bad or wrong, okay? It's just that's the way the nature of the flesh is. We talked about last week being a three-part being, spirit, soul, and body, okay? Your spirit man you can't feel. You have to allow that spirit man to rise up and dominate you. Now let's look at Proverbs chapter 13, verse 10. We'll get into something even more controversial. So. <laughs> Y'all having fun? Yes. I'm having fun. Yes. Praise God. Proverbs 13, 10. By pride comes nothing but strife. Now I like the King James here. It says, only by pride cometh contention, but the, with the well advises wisdom. Only by pride comes contention. It didn't say it's the leading cause. It didn't say it's a contributing factor. It says only by pride comes contention. Amen. So if there's contention of any kind, somewhere there's pride involved. Yes. We just have to, not everybody shout it once now. <laughs> Amen. I said, y'all got, you guys got to help me out. My review's coming up. Okay. No, we're, we're, we love to have fun about this now. Y'all yes. like to have fun? Yes. Amen. You know, Melissa and I, we just walk around the house joking all the time, having fun, having a good time. We just have fun. You know, I'm a nice guy. You'd like me if you knew me. <laughs> Amen. That's humility, right? Amen. Now, I, look, I know I look all stoic and serious all the time when I'm on the, I'm on the piano, you know. But the main reason is because that light right there hits me right in the face. And it makes me squint. So I'm, I really am happy, I promise you. Amen. <laughs> David knows. David knows. Amen. Praise God. No, we, we like to have a good time. You know, me and Melissa are just easy going. You know, if, if you can't get along with us, you'd probably be the kind of person that'd step on a baby chicken, you know. <laughs> good night, everybody. Thank you for coming. Drive safely. <laughs> Amen. No, we like to have fun. Praise God. Amen. Now, if you have ears to hear... And you're open and honest. I think I've lost it. So. <laughs> Praise God. Now, if, we're, if we have ears to hear and we're open and honest, then the Lord will begin to show us areas of our life where we need to humble ourselves. Amen? And we all do. Now, you don't want to yield to guilt and condemnation. That's a great time to say, no, I'm the righteousness of God. Lord, thank you for showing me that. Thank you for showing me, Lord. How do I fix that? How do I, how do I humble myself? What do I do? You know, we talked about this before that, you know, you're yielding to your nature to affect your behavior. It's not just about changing how you're acting. That will not last for very long. But if you can see it, 
whether it's pride or humility, now you're dealing with it. And you're growing. And that's a good thing. See, we want to grow. We've been talking all year about this being a growth atmosphere. Oh, I love it. It's such a growth atmosphere. You, you can almost just, you know, I, I imagine sometimes farmers who do that for a living, and it's quiet, they can just go out there and just hear the plants growing. Uh, you, can just, you can just sense people growing here. Amen. See, nobody's ever going to say, I've conquered it, I've defeated pride. Nobody will ever conquer that. Now, the subject came again with Jesus, uh, again a couple chapters later after Matthew 18. Now James and John came with Mama to talk to him. Now, you know if Mama's involved, it's serious. Right? I want to, Jesus, I want you to promise me that my sons will be on either side of you when you come into your kingdom. So in Matthew chapter 20, verse 25, <clears throat> excuse me, Jesus said, He called them to Him. He said, You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. Whosoever shall be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever shall be chief among you, let him be your servant, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. So we can see there again, they were looking for recognition and honor, status and position and title. But Jesus said, if you want to be great, then you need to be a servant and a minister. Right? Praise God. Greatness springs from serving. Now if you match that about what he said before about humility the greatest in the kingdom of heaven would humble himself like a child, then humility is just being a servant and a minister and giving of yourself. That's the face of honor. You know, we said before honor is humility. The face of honor and humility is just being a servant and a minister. You know, a servant is somebody who gives their self up for another and is devoted to other people to the disregard of their own interests. You know, even an elected official with authority and position and influence and title Big or small is called what? A public servant. Right. A public servant. From the top to the bottom, that's what they are. You know, one of the meanings of ministers is to run errands, be a deacon or an attendant or a waiter. Now, what I found interesting about all that is not one time did it say preach or teach. Wow. I know that just burst a lot of bubbles. <laughs> no, he talked about ministering being serving in some capacity. And that greatest... Leadership is servant leadership. Now, this is not a disregard for divine order or church government, right? Now, what it means is that nobody's too big to do the little things. Nobody's too big to do the little things. And servant leaders elevate everybody around them. Now, as I was reading this uh, verse where Jesus said, let him be your servant or let him be your minister, three words jumped out to me. Let him be. Let him be. It's almost like the Holy Spirit's shouting, to, let him be. Okay. If Pastor Mark and Jennifer are your pastors, let them be your minister. Amen. Let them be. Amen. So there's a letting that goes along with it. There's a relationship of back and forth, of letting. Right? right? Yes. Let Pastor Mark be your pastor. Let the leadership here at Life of Faith, let them be your servant and your minister. Let other people speak into your life. You know, you have to, there's no spiritual authority in your life unless you give it. Yep. Amen. Amen. You have, to, you have to submit yourself to spiritual authority. And that's, that's, that's something you do voluntarily. Now, if you're part of another church and you stumbled on this today, either on live stream, you wonder, what in the world have I got myself into? <laughs> Let me say that. Let your pastor be your minister. Let him be. And if you think, I don't need no man to teach me, then you're refusing the gifts that Jesus gave. Right? right? Say, Right? In Ephesians 4, it says, Jesus Himself ascended on high, and He gave gifts unto men. Yep. Now, I haven't left the subject, okay? We're still talking about humility. People are fine to say that they're humble before God, but the same thing is true with men, okay? And these are things that need to be said. I said this last week, guys, that people that stand in God-ordained offices, they speak beyond themselves. They speak out of a place of gifting and anointing right. that Jesus Himself gave. Right. Apostles, prophets... Evangelists, pastors, and teachers, they speak from a place of anointing and gifting. You know, Paul said this. He said, I come to you, to the Roman church, to impart unto you some spiritual gift and establish you in your faith. That's right. Now, everybody can preach and teach to some level. Everybody can witness and everybody can share the gospel. Everybody can prophesy. We've learned about that on Wednesday night. But that's an equipping ministry there. Not everybody can equip. Thank you for that thunderous applause. Amen. Humility will recognize that. 
Now, I know a lot of what the Lord uses me and Melissa for, not only as teaching, but impartation. You know, and there's a great humility that goes along with that because we know it's not flesh, okay? Sometimes I'm like Brother Andrew talks about, Lord, why in the world would you use me for anything? Brother Andrew talks about, he, he's just a hick from Texas. But the Lord uses him to minister to billions of people. Not because of who he is, but because who Jesus is in him. And it's that gift that's in him to teach. Praise God. We never honor flesh. You know, if I look at myself and I think that I'm inadequate or unworthy or not smart enough, then what I've done is I've just exalted my opinion above what the Lord says. And we do, we do what he called us to do. Now, as we were discussing honor and humility, this verse just kept coming up. And it's important for our growth, life of faith. So let's get this. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go with this. Y'all love me? Amen. I love you regardless. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17. Obey them who have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit themselves, for they watch for your souls as they must give account. That's right. You know, now we've read that before, that, you know, they're accountable, right? That's Those of us that minister the Word are accountable to God. And there's truth in that, okay? But that's not what that word account is. The word account is the word logos. It's Word. It says they must give the Word. Whatever's coming out of this pulpit is what the Holy Spirit is ministering to Pastor Mark or me or whoever's up here to give the Word. That they may do it with joy and not with grief. You know, we don't need to give Pastor Mark grief or any other minister grief. He says they want to do it with joy because when we do, it's unprofitable for us. There's no value in that. It just doesn't mean we're accountable. It means they're given the word that the Lord's given them, and it's for your good. It's for watching out for your soul. Giving people grief does not serve you. The easy to read version says it won't help you to make it hard for them. It actually says it's harmful for you, of no value to you. The message translation says, why would you want to make things harder for them? And I like this, the Phillips translation, when it talks about this idea. You know, guys, everybody needs somebody to watch out for their soul. Whether you think you do or you don't, you do. And I can say with all humility that Melissa and I pray over you regularly and we watch for your soul. And I thank God that we've got people like Mark and Jennifer in our lives that watch for our soul. Amen. The Phillips translation says this, they are like men standing guard over your spiritual good. Come on. I like that. Yep. You know, all we see is the natural. But see, things are happening in the spirit that we don't see. That's right. And we've got to trust that. Praise the Lord. They are like men standing guard over your spiritual good. And you know that word obey in our day of grace has such a harsh feeling, so I understand that. But many think that that's not a Bible word because of grace, but it is a Bible word. And it starts giving the people the th thought that you're, not, you're being legalistic. But no, the word obey is this. It means have confidence in. I have confidence in you. It means be persuadable. You know, when the Word of the Lord's coming forth here, be persuadable, be teachable. That's what meekness is. That's what humility is, is being teachable and being persuadable. Trust and believe. Trust and believe that they're guarding over your soul. And be agreeable. Amen. Amen. Now, they paid me very little to say that, okay? Wow. <laughs> Thought I'd get better, better amen on that. It also says to submit. The word submit means stop resisting. Stop resisting. Just yield. Be humble. You know, we're in this day and time of what people call, they love to use the word church hurt, you know. So everybody's just guarded. But guarded does not come from a place of humility. It's motivated by fear. That's right. That's right. Praise God. If this is your church and you consider Mark and Jennifer and the leadership here your pastors, then don't resist. Praise God. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Some people, their first response to everything is just put up a wall. But let's, let's lower the wall, folks. We're in a safe place. They've proven themselves over years. And as I told you last week, I've spent time with them behind the scenes. I've never seen one speck of anything but what is motivated to give. And somebody in leadership, that's refreshing, number one. And number two, it's humble. Praise God. You know, the Lord could have sent you anywhere else. You could have been born at any place in history, any time in history, but you were born for such a time as this. Amen. And He brought you here. Hallelujah. So what's going on here? Let's get this. 
That's humility. Praise God. Now, I realize I'm going to lose my parking place over this, but I'm just impressed to go with it. Praise God. We can't, you know, we can't be afraid of truth. We can't be afraid of truth. Amen. Just because some people won't accept it. You know, the answer, people worry about misuse and abuse. The answer for misuse and abuse is correct use and good teaching and good leadership. Amen. It's not to avoid it. Fear avoids, but humility will speak truth with humility and grace. Amen. It says, as they must give account, they must give the word that the Lord is speaking. You know, Jesus said this to Peter, if you love me, you're going to feed my people. You're going to feed my people. Now, we love truth and the message of grace, but grace is a person. Amen? And the person of Jesus, when He, grace, ascended on high, it said He gave gifts to men and women. Five-fold equipping ministry gifts are His divine order. It's not the people or their flesh. It's not that anybody's better than one another, but it's the gifting. And there's honor and humility involved in receiving. Praise God. Amen. And they can only hold a space, place of authority in your life if we give it to them. And that's humility. Praise God. Now, guys, I'll just say this to you with all humility. <laughs> I couldn't care less if you call me Pastor Allen, okay? That doesn't matter to me. I care about you. Paul said to this Corinthian church, right after he talked about the grace in his life, he said, I seek not yours but you. Here at Life of Faith, we don't seek anything from you. We seek you. But I also realize with great humility that when people call me that, that they're accessing the gifting. And it gives me an opportunity to minister. So praise God. Like I said, my name is Alan. I'm your friend, okay? I'm growing just like you are. Praise God. But we have to be comfortable with this idea of honoring one another. If I'm going to outdo you in love and you're going to outdo me in love and honor, we've got to get comfortable with that. We can't shy away from it. Praise the Lord. Now, no one's going to agree 100% with anybody, right? right? But we don't have to be disagreeable. And here's a radical thought. You could be wrong. Becca said, that's kicking it too far, Alan. You know, a person that's humble will listen to other people even if they think they're wrong. Because you know what? You might learn something. You know, when it comes to that, you know, humility and people that are humble are not afraid of the word saying I'm wrong. But so many people that I run into that have learned a little bit about the things of God are kind of like the Fonz. Y'all know who the Fonz is? Raise your hand if you know who the Fonz is. Okay. Some people are too young to know who the Fonz is. Happy day, I know. You know, from happy days, he was the coolest of the cool, right? Hey, yeah. All the girls loved the Fonz. All the guys wanted to be his friend. But there was one person that could call him on his junk, and that was Miss Cunningham. And she always knew how to put him in his place. And then it would come to a point where Fonzie realized he was wrong, and he'd have to admit it. He'd go, I roo, roo, roo. I'm roo, 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 roo. He couldn't say it. He had too much pride to admit he was wrong. So let's don't be like the Fonz, okay? <laughs> if you're wrong, admit it. That's what humility would do and learn and grow from it. That was really a good show back in the day, right? <laughs> no, praise the Lord. We're having fun. This is honoring leaders. This is entering in. And you know when the Lord's emphasizing something, uh, uh, they're saying that you know, the pastors are giving account of, we just take hold of it. We enter into it. Amen? Now how do you enter into something? We, so we always talk about, oh, enter in, enter in. Well, how do you enter in anything? You, you go to Walmart and you see the sign that says enter, you just walk toward it. Right? You don't wonder, how do I get into Walmart? You see the sign, you just walk in. Well, when the Lord's giving a count up here, He's telling you, He's giving you the sign to enter. Just get in. You know, we've been talking about unlimited praise. It gave me the greatest joy to see people down here jumping and hollering and having a good time praising and worshiping the Lord. Humility just enters into what the Lord's doing. Praise God. Becoming an active participant. You know, this sit back and watch attitude does not come from a place of humility. Amen. We said it this year. Let's get all in. Always holding back and resisting. Amen. There's just no faith in that, guys. And really, based on Hebrews 13, 17, it's hurting you. You know, Jesus told Paul when he met him on the road to Damascus and he fell to the ground and said he saw a bright light and he said, Lord, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus who you are persecuting. Well, he's like, how am I persecuting you? Well, he was hurting the people of God, throwing them in prison, even killing them. Jesus said, you're persecuting me. And he said, Paul, it's hard for you to kick against what I'm doing. That's hard for you. Now, you can get in line with me, and you can get up and go in the city and do what I tell you to do, but it's hurting you. Praise God. They, 
They watch for your souls. You know, it did not say to follow them because they never make a mistake and they're perfect, right? right. It said, obey them that have the rule. If you give them spiritual authority, if you give people spiritual authority in your life, then don't resist. Amen. amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's look at uh, one more verse here. 1 Peter chapter 5. Worship team, y'all can go ahead and get ready to come on up. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be clo- uh, subject one to another and be clothed with humility. And here he says the same thing that James said. For God resists the proud and giveth grace to the humble. And we see from, from James, he gives more grace to the humble, right? Humble yourselves, therefore, into the mighty hand of God, that he, he may exalt you in due time. Well, what's due time? When you humble yourself. That's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. James said to submit to God, and Peter said to submit to elders and one another. So he called, uh, basically humility would cause more grace to flow if you humble yourself before God. And then Peter said, humble yourself before other people. Both of them to, are together because you're reflecting, you know, how you treat other people is a reflection of your relationship with God. Right. It just is, guys. I know we don't like to think about it that way, but it's true. You need people that are smarter than you in your life. You need people that are more mature than you in the Lord than you, right? Here's a radical thought. Somebody might know more than you do. (laughs) Praise God. There may be somebody there. He says in verse 7, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Now, there is, we talk about casting care like how to pay your bills or worrying about your kids and things like that as casting care upon the Lord. But what about the care of what everybody else thinks about you? Always worried about how everybody's looking at me. That's a care you can cast. And he says in verse 8, be sober or be aware. Be aware of pride and humility. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, who is pride personified as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Pride. That's something that devours. So resist it. Praise God. He says, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Well, you resist all, anything that's from the devil, you resist it, right? right? Whether it's sickness and disease or poverty and lack or any type of giant that's coming against your life, you resist it. But we resist this too because it's from the enemy. And he says there, be clothed with humility. You know, the first thing you notice about people is their clothes. He also says that the face of honor is humility. If you see somebody, you're going to notice two things, their face and their clothes, right? Amen. So one of the distinguishing characteristics of a believer that we should be clothed with and should just jump out at people is how humble we are and how we show honor. Now, there's so much more we can say, but I believe that we've covered what the Lord uh, wanted to cover and highlight. And as we have opportunity, we'll talk about more of these things. Uh, And as we close, I want to leave you with this thought. One of the key indications and expressions of humility is just being thankful. Just thanksgiving to God. Just appreciating everything. Pride is demanding it's unthankful and ungrateful, but hum- humble people are just thankful and grateful. They, they appreciate everything. They expect nothing. Being thankful for what you have. Psalm 100 verse 4 says this, Enter, in his gates, enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him and bless His name. I love the message translation on this. You know, sometimes you'll read a verse in a different translation it just kind of grabs your heart. He says this, Enter with the password, thank you. Thank you. He gives us the password. Thank you. Just thank you, Lord. Let's say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we humble. Say, I humble myself before you today, Lord. Say, I humble myself before you today, Lord. Come on, say it like you mean it one time. I humble myself before you, Lord. I will not exalt my opinion above your word. I believe what you said. I trust what you said. I will not lean to my own understanding. And I thank you that you're a great God and the greater one lives in me. Oh, let's thank Him now. Let's thank Him. Praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you and we thank you, Lord. Enter with the password thank you. Praise God. Amen.